Hi guys, welcome back to Alternate. Ribbing is a really important part of constructing a garment from the cuffs to the hem to the neckline. It's also really important in garments like hats or toques or beanies. It can be either just something to help keep it on your head or it can be the entire pattern of the fabric uh, because it is decorative as well as being a really functional part of the fabric. You can also use it in socks and mitts and you know the, the list does really go on and on. It's an excellent fabric because it is double sided so it looks just as good on the public side as it does on the private side or the right and wrong side. So this makes it a really good option for scarves as well. It doesn't curl because it has even tension across both sides of, of uh, the piece of fabric. And so what that basically means is that it's not longer on one side or shorter on the other side or tighter and looser on the other side. So it generally lies pretty flat even without blocking. And in cross section, it creates a fabric that looks a little bit like corrugated iron as the knits sit forward and the pearls drop back. Ribbing is almost always constructed from just knits and pearls. So if you know how to do knit and pearl stitch, then you know how to do rib stitch. And if you don't know how to do those, then hit the card up here to check out my first video on knitting and uh, on knit stitch and pearl stitch. So while this video is for beginners, if you already know how to do rib, don't run away. There might be something that you can find useful in this video. If you're one of these people who loves to have neat gauge, and I think we kind of all like that, but find your rib stitch looks a little bit messy, particularly if you're doing two by two rib or any multiples thereof, um, then there are a couple of tips in this video that I can give you to help create a neater rib stitch. <laughs> I talked about two by two rib. Um, what does that mean? So one by one rib is where you have a one knit stitch and one purl stitch, and that's the entire stitch repeat for that ribbing that you would repeat row after row after row. And that has really good horizontal stretch. You'll notice that if you knit, say 50 stitches on a certain size needles with a particular fabric, you might get a bit of fabric that's this wide. And then if you do exactly the same, use the same yarn on the same needles and use the same number of stitches, you might get ribbing that's probably this big because it pulls together and has quite good elasticity, which is what makes it so useful for cuffs and hems and necklines. When I say two by two rib, this means that you will knit, knit, purl, and purl, and that gives you four stitches. So that would be a four stitch repeat, which means that when you're casting on stitches, you need at least four and as many as you want, but multiples of four. So it could be 124, it could be 128, it could be 300, 40, but it has to be multiples of four. And for this reason, I'm gonna try and explain it. I'll probably use my hands. So you want to do a jumper with two by two rib stitch hem, and you're gonna need it as a big, long, flat piece, and then connecting them around. This is not exactly what you do. You would do this maybe for a beanie, I guess. Um, so you would start off with your two knit stitches and two purl stitches. Then you would continue that four stitch repeat all the way to the very end, but you wanna end on a second purl stitch because when you actually create a ring of fabric, you want it to be seamless all the way around. You don't want to have a section where there are four knit stitches and they don't want to have a section where there are three stitches. So you need to make sure that it's multiples of four if you're doing two by two rib, multiples of two for a one by one rib. And if you're doing a three by three rib, you're going to need six stitches. Okay, let's jump in and have a look at how ribbing is made. All right, so let's get started with this ribbing. I'm going to show you one by one rib first. I have cast on multiples of four, uh, which are multiples of two, so I can do one by one or two by two rib using this number of stitches. And it's really simple. All we're going to do is start off with a knit stitch. So let's do my weird way of tensioning yarn. So we're going into the front with yarn in back, looping around, slipping it off, and then we're going to yarn forward, do a knit stitch. And that's basically a one by one stitch. So we're just gonna keep repeating that until the end of the row. Okay guys, so I'm come to my last two stitches. It should be a knit and a purl. So we have knit one, and we're ending on a purl, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, we're gonna turn the work. And it kind of looks like a bit of a mess at the moment, but you can see, and I'll show you here, I've used this really chunky yarn, which by the way, I would never use needles this big to rib in this yarn. You can pretty much never get needles too small to do ribbing. It gives it more elasticity. This would not be 
This would be more of a decorative ribbing, it wouldn't be functional. So we can't really see what's going on here, but there is a pearl bump and you can see that as a tiny little horizontal bar going across the uh, underneath this, the, the stitch that's actually still on the needle right now. Then if we look about below the next stitch, we can see a little V and that tells us that that's a knit stitch. So we've got, we can, we can actually you know, rearrange this to show us a V stitch, but it's kind of difficult. So we know we've got knit pearl, knit pearl, knit pearl. This is reading the work. So if you are in the middle of a row or uh, you know, if the phone rings or something like that and you're in the middle of doing rib stitch and you pick your work up again and you think, oh crap, where am I? You can read the work below the stitches that are on the needles to tell you what your next stitch should be. You'll get used to this, it takes a bit of practice. So we just repeat the same thing again. So here we have it guys, you can see the very basics, the very beginning of a one by one rib. Now what I really wanted to show you was the two by two rib because this is where people get caught up. And I've got a swatch here of two by two ribbing that I did. And, and now this is the kind of common problem that we can get. You can see loose stitches here, kind of uneven on this end. And it's on the second pearl. This looks like the first in the column, but obviously we're knitting from right to left. So the, the, this is the second knit stitch. Um, so I want to show you a technique to get a little bit more like this column here, which is pretty equal in tension from one knit to the next. It is kind of hard to get it, you know, really tight on this kind of yarn, but I'll, I'll demonstrate that for you anyway. All right, so now we're gonna do knit two, pearl two. So knit one, and I kind of say this in my head as I'm going, knit two. So then we're gonna yarn forward and knit uh, pearl one, pearl two. But if you just do that, you're basically going to get some messy fabric. So I'll show you a couple of tips here. So we're going, we're starting knit one and knit two. Now what we have to do is bring the yarn forward to do a purl, but we're creating a bit of an extra length bar of yarn here, which is going to slacken up this second knit stitch. So what we can do is actually physically push the purl bump forward so that it reduces the distance that that yarn has to travel. Then we can do our first purl stitch. And once we slip it off, then tighten that purl stitch. And you can yank pretty hard with this, depending on the kind of yarn you're using and then do the second pearl stitch as normal. And those two little steps are basically going to give you a much neater two by two rib. So this is the second knit. We're going to bring the, I don't know if you can see that very well, but we're actually just using our finger to guide forward the pearl bump. Now we can pearl and tug after you've formed the stitch. And that should give you a neat two by two rib. Okay, so if you continue on in that way, you will get one by one ribbing that looks like this or two by two ribbing as seen in this beanie here. And you can tell that by using those two simple techniques of pushing the pearl bump forward and then tugging quite firmly on the first pearl stitch that you'll get a pretty even two by two ribbing. So I hope that was really useful for you guys. Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so, so you don't miss out on any new uploads. And, See you next week. Bye. Bye.